All right, so a subscriber of mine suggested I test Bootstrap for accessibility, and I thought it would be fun to test their components of Bootstrap to see how accessible they are. Here I am on the Bootstrap's website, and the first thing I see that kind of irritates me is this sticky menu. I don't like sticky menus. I'm going to try to zoom in to the page and... Okay, so they unsticky the menu when it's zoomed in. Good, because a lot of subsites don't do that. <laughs> but let's focus on the... Uh, components themselves to see if they're accessible. Let's start with the accordion. So I like that they have this note here that says the animation effect of these components depends on prefers reduced motion media query. So the accordion should have animation on default. However, I browse the internet with animations off and I'm really happy when I see websites and components that respect the user settings because people who have vertigo, migraines, or photosensitive epilepsy, they prefer to turn off animations while browsing the web since otherwise those animations can harm them. They can trigger your vertigo, they can trigger a seizure, they're, they're really, they can be really harmful. That's why respecting user settings is something really, really good. Let's test the accordion itself. The first one is the accordion, so let's go down and test it. And it doesn't have an animation, which is good. Let's uh, look at the markup, okay. It has area expanded, area controls, these are useless. The div ID has an uh, area labeled by inside. I'm not sure this is needed. I wonder if this was going to make, yes. So a div cannot have an accessible name unless it has a row of region. So the area labeled by is not going to have any effect. And I can show you if we if we expand here, collapse one, okay, uh, accessibility. Okay, so it does have a name, interesting. Row generic. Okay, so it's it has a name, but it has a row generic, so the screen reader is still not going to announce the name, but I don't know why this div has a name, because the screen reader is going to read the contents of this div. So it, it, the screen reader is still not going to announce the name because it has a row generic. Only row regions going to have any meaning, but then it's going to be a landmark, which will be redundant, so. But other than that, I mean, other than the useless area labeled by and the area controls, which the area control is not really their fault. It is said in the area notes that you need area controls for accordions. So they just haven't done like in-depth testing. So I think that's pretty good. I mean, it collapses, has area collapsed false. It has a heading for the accordions. I think that's pretty good. I don't have any bad things to say except the, the redundant area label. Um, one thing I want to try is high contrast mode. I want to see if those buttons or basically I want to see if those icons are still visible in high contrast mode, but we're going to do that later. So then we have alerts. So these are the alerts and alerts are usually if you create, if you do an action, for example, if you have a to-do list and you add an item to the to-do list, an alert should go on and set XYZ added to the to-do list. So they have a row alert. However, it will be better if there is already live since row alert is not really consistent and it's better if it's row alert and are you alive for this besides row alert is really it really interrupts you so i'm not really sure this is the correct approach here they have the and uh, here they have html inside the alert and if you're using aria if you want this to be announced by screen readers they're not really going to it's not a good idea to include html because for alerts that trigger screen reader to announce them you want them to be succinct and the screen and usually they disappear so the people are not gonna screen readers are not gonna find the link you know or the html so i don't really agree with that i haven't really tested this with screen reader but i think this needs to be tested with a screen reader before i can say yes this is bad or this is good this one has a close button okay it's accessible with the keyboard so that's good the button is good i have to see if it shows up on high contrast mode so this one, I have to test it with a screen reader, so I'm not sure if it's accessible or not. So I'm just going to say, I don't know, <laughs> let's go with badges. Okay, so badges are those, they're just, uh, it's just a span. It's going to be announced by screen reader because it's just a text and it doesn't, they haven't done anything bad on it. So then you have notifications. The styling of badges provides a visual cue to the purpose. These users who seem to be presenting content depending on the specific situation, these badges may seem like random additional words with numbers okay that's weird ah okay so they have added 
visually hidden. This is for screen readers to to read for the badges. So I think those are good. I don't see any problems with it. They're, it's a button, nine, and then yeah, that's that's pretty good. Background pop, background uh, colors for the badges. Badges not really interesting, but they seem good. Okay, so example breadcrumbs. Okay, area label breadcrumb. Okay, so the nav has an area label. That's good. Okay, yeah, it it seems pretty good. I'm happy with it. Yep, pretty good. Dividers. That's pretty. That's pretty standard. I don't have anything bad to say. As much as I'm looking for it. Yeah, they even add. Uh, add ask you to add a label to the breadcrumb. So that's good. So buttons, and then they they tell you about the system technologies, and that's really good. But the problem is if a if a developer doesn't have any experience with accessibility, no wonder how, no matter how much they read that information, they're still not going to be able to make an accessible website. So, unless the developer is experienced in accessibility, these are, I mean, it's a good thing that they have them, but it's not going to solve accessibility though. I wish they would add, please read more about accessibility, learn more about accessibility, don't just use our accessible framework. They never claim that their framework is accessible, I think. I don't think so. So, okay, so they have the buttons. I don't like this uh, row button link. This is really bad. It, you, you're not supposed to, to use the, the anchor tag for buttons or the buttons for links because this in high contrast mode is going to show up as a link, not as a button. So users in high contrast mode will be confused. And also people will try to activate it with the space bar. Let me see if this link activates with the space bar. No, it doesn't, see? They haven't done their, their job correctly with those links. So this is a big issue I see. So if I if I press tab and I try to activate this button with the space bar, see, I'm activating with the space bar and enter. But if I try to activate the link, I just scroll down because they haven't done their job though to be activated with the space bar. So that's, that's on them. That's really bad. Let's see, outline buttons, they seem fine. Large buttons, small buttons. Disabled buttons. Yep. Uh, when you want to disable buttons, use the disabled attribute. That's the best one. They do have disabled links. Okay, so they explain here that you can't. The disabled attribute doesn't work on links. That's why they have to do tap index minus one, and they have to do area disabled true. However, this is still pretty bad because. Even though there is tap index minus one area disabled true, it's still in the accessibility tree unless you add raw presentation or see, it's still in the accessibility tree. Unless you add raw presentation or area hidden. And but and the problem is when you have an interactive element, interactive elements are elements that users can interact with, like buttons, links, and you disable the keyboard access to it users can still select it. For example, I can select I can select interactive elements with NVDA and narrator and it just announces blank or clickable, which is really bad user experience. And those things will still show up on the elements list. So and no, not only that, but the WIGAC warns and it tells you do not use tap index minus one and on interactive elements. It says not use tap index minus one and are they hidden on interactive visible elements, okay? If this element is hidden visually, then you can use tap index minus one and area disabled, area hidden, whatever. But since these are visible, this is actually really bad user experience. So I'm gonna flag them for that, that's really bad. Okay, and now we have block buttons. These are fine. These buttons don't really do anything, so. These are toggle buttons and they have area pressed. They have links with raw button. Again, that's really bad. Don't do that. Disabled link. No, that's that's bad for accessibility, like I mentioned before. Okay, so that's buttons. Button group. I think that's the same. Don't really care about that. Cards. Okay, cards. They only have one interactive link. The whole card is not clickable. Okay, let me zoom in to see how the card shows up. I've zoomed in 400%. Okay, good. Good. So far, so good. It has a border, two links. Okay, so far so good. There, but I don't see any issues with them. Not off the top of my head. Okay, I think we're good with the cards. Now let's go with the carousel. Okay. With controls. Okay, let's see if I can interact with them with my screen reader. Excuse me, let me see if I can interact with the keyboard. 
Okay, now this is bad. The, the arrows of the carousel do not have an outline. They just change the lightness of the... Only the lightness of the arrow is being changed. So this is this this violates WGAC visible focus success criterions. So this is really this is bad for accessibility. On top of that, it looks like this slider auto rotates and there is no pause button. So that that violates WGAC success criterion pause pause stop hide, which means every time you have interactive animation, video, anything that lasts more than five seconds, it must require a pause or stop control. And I don't see any of that. Yes, it, it rotates automatically, which is really bad for accessibility. I do not like that. Okay. Okay. Let me see how they, they, they... So the buttons are actually using the button element, which is good. And they have... And they have next... They have visually hidden next, which is good. So... And now we have indicators. And let's see how they're coded. Now, with these indicators, I usually do a tap control. So there's no need for area true, area current true. With the indicators, this is not going to do anything. Area label, these are good, slide two, three, these are okay. So I usually do a tap control for the area indicators and tap control for the whole slider since it's really static. And this way users can use the screen reader to select the whole slider and the whole contents will be read aloud. So I also flag them for that. Captions, the captions seem okay. I'm gonna have to see how it, how it looks on high contrast mode. This is with transition, but I have a disabled animations change the amount of time it takes to for each slider to yeah you need to have you need to have a pause button but there's no pause button carousel supports swiping left to right touch screen devices can be disabled does not include okay you can disable touch swiping i don't know why there's also dark variant okay close button this button's fine I don't have anything bad against it. I have to test it on high, high contrast mode though because I don't think it's going to show up. So that will be bad. Collapse. Show, and let me see if it has already expanded. Yes, it has already expanded. So that's good. I don't have anything bad to say about these buttons. They're just collapsible. Drop downs. The drop down. Okay, let me see. Drop down. I press escape. It, it collapses. Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything. Okay, so for this, the U has an area labeled by. This is redundant. The screeners are not going to read it. Also, the they're using a link again for a button. This is such a rookie mistake. Don't use links for buttons. Just use the button element. So I'm going to flag them for that. Otherwise, I don't really like this split button thing. Like half of the button is expanded. The other one isn't. So I don't really like that. List group. This is not really interactive, is it? No, there's no need for area current true on the list group. That's redundant. Okay, model. Okay, let me see. Okay, so models are very tricky. Let me see. I have to turn on my screen reader so I can see if the model is actually, if the screen reader actually reads the model to, to test it on. So let me do that. But before I do that, I want to do a quick test with high contrast mode. And I wanted to test buttons, the close button close button. I want to test it with high contrast mode. And what else? Maybe, maybe, maybe this one too. So I'm going to turn on high contrast mode. Now I'm going to press Alt plus Shift plus print screen. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to quickly go through. See, links are yellow, which is really good. The bread crimp is good. I'm going to go to the buttons. Looks like the buttons, see, I told you. <laughs> so in high contrast mode, the black theme, the links are always yellow. Now, since these guys are using links for the button, quote unquote, for the quote unquote button component, they're showing up as links in high contrast mode, which is really bad for accessibility. Uh, as you can see, you have normal buttons that show up as white, as, you, as, as they should in high contrast mode, black theme. But these are, that, that's why you shouldn't use a link as a button, okay? So they're, they're not showing up as they should. And the, the in black theme, the green text means are disabled. Okay, and now let's go see the close button. The close button fails high contrast test. It's not showing up. The white variant, of course, is showing up. But the, when I, if I change it to the white theme, then the black variant of the close button is not going to show up. So this is really bad for accessibility. I don't like that. Going to fail them there as well. Uh, let's see the model. It's... Shows up in high contrast mode. 
Okay, so it's, they're using the correct markup, so it looks like it is. Let me let me turn it on. Launch menu model. Okay, close. Save changes. Okay, looks good. Uh, let me. I want to go. I want. Well, I'm on high contrast mode. I want to go to the two tips. Default two tip. Okay, looks like it's showing up. What else? Spinners. Let's see if the spinners are showing up in high contrast mode. Looks like only one spinner is showing up in high contrast mode. There are a couple of them. So they're also being also failed. Yeah, spinners, they're, they're kind of difficult because they have different... Um, oh wait, maybe this is just one spinner, sorry. They have different uh, colors, but in high contrast mode, it doesn't really preserve colors. However, there is a way you can actually add some colors if you use canvas text or canvas. I'm not sure if it's going to be useful for this, but... See, but this spinner is doesn't show up at all growing spinner so yeah it, i think this one is let's see the progress okay the progress is just see there is absolutely no so i'm going to turn on high contrast mode. see there is nothing in in the progress progress bar striped high contrast mode is just it just fails in high contrast mode let me change the the theme of kind of contrast mode um, I wonder if it will be worth it. No, no, I'm not going to change the theme to kind of contrast mode. Let me turn off kind of contrast, high contrast mode. I'm going to press Alt plus Shift plus print screen. Okay, see how many of these weren't showing up in high contrast mode? None of them were showing. There were so many. Toggle animation, remember the percentage? There was nothing showing up. And they can easily solve that. I just add a, a transparent border. <laughs> and uh, well, a transparent border and actually with the, they're just using color which is not going to show up so they actually have to do some more work on it um so it can show up but actually so yeah hey it's high contrast mode again i just realized that i tested on chrome which just recently started supporting high contrast mode so i opened the same page on edge which absolutely supports high contrast mode and i see the absolute same results so on on edge where it's supposed to support high contrast mode but since those the bootstrap developers haven't done their job right i can see absolutely no spinners and if we go over to the close button we can see it disappear as well so it's the like the progress is just not happening so yeah they haven't done their, their job correctly i just wanted to point that out okay so this is the model i have to turn on my screen reader to test it see how it works on screen readers but I'm going to do a quick uh, keyboard test, so I'm just going to launch the model. Let me test it with. Okay, it works with zoom in, but let me see what happens if I put a lot of text into the model. Because one time I tested the model, and when a lot of text was text was put in, it was not showing well when zoomed in. Like there was no scroll bar. Okay, so they did a good job with that. I'm going to. Go back to 150% scroll, uh, excuse me, zoom, scrolling long content. Okay, they actually have thought about that. Okay, so here is the scroll bar. Okay, let me zoom in. Oh, okay, that's not good. See, that's the same problem I, I came up with last time. I was testing a model. There was a lot of text and there, so, okay, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to, oh, uh, Okay, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to press down arrow key to try to to scroll in the model. I'm I'm not able to scroll in the model, so I am not able to scroll in. If if I'm a keyboard user, if I'm unable to use a mouse, let's say that I have broken my hands, or I prefer to navigate the website with a mouse, and I'm trying to navigate this web. Excuse me, I prefer to navigate websites with the keyboard. And I'm trying to navigate this model. I'm not able to do it because I'm trying to scroll down, but I can't. I can only go to the close button, close button again, save changes, and then my after I press a couple of tabs, my, my focus disappears, which is really bad and validates success criterion focus visible. And even with my mouse, I can only read like a really bad. This is when I have scrolled, okay? Even if I am not scrolled and I'm just navigating it with the with the key, I'm, I'm pressing down and up where I'm still not able to. So this model is inaccessible. If it's inaccessible with the keyboard, it's probably not gonna be accessible with the screen reader. I'm curious if it gets I'm curious if it was going to be announced. So I'm going to press escape to see if it closes. Okay, that's good. It closes. Okay, so this video is kind of long and I'm getting tired. So I'm not, I'm not be able to test the rest of the components, but I'm going to stop at the model. I'm going to turn on my screen reader now and see if we can read the model and then we're going to stop and maybe we can have a part two of this video. So let me turn on my screen reader. I'm going to turn on NVDA. 
Main landmark launch demo modal button. Spacebar to activate. Modal title. Clickable heading level 5 modal title. Button close. Woohoo. You're reading this text in a modal woohoo. You're reading this text. Reading this text. You're woohoo. You're close. Close. Save. Cha close button. Button launch. Copy. Anchor. Launch static backdrop modal button. Spacebar to activate. Modal title. Clickable heading level 5 modal title. Button close. I will not close if you click outside me. Don't even try to press escape key. Button cl I will not button cl heading level 5 button close. I will button close button understood. Very good. Why am I not able to close with the escape key? I don't like this. This is not accessible. Models should always be closed with the ex escape key. It should always have the option to be closed with the escape key. Okay. And what I want to do is let me turn on high contrast mode because I don't think this close button is going to show up. But so far, the text is announced with a screen reader, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to turn off my screen reader now. Exit NVDA. I'm going to turn on high contrast mode. The close button has disappeared on high contrast mode. So that's really bad for accessibility. Okay, and the last thing I want to test very quick is the two tip. Two tips are very difficult to make accessible. I'm going to turn off high contrast mode. Okay. So I have activated the two tip with my mouse over. So with two tips, you want to be able to hover over them and not, them not disappearing. So I'm trying to hover over the two tip right now. The two tip disappears. This is in violation of success criterion focus content on focus or hover. Because if I'm using a screen magnifier and I want to magnify the text of the two tip, I want to be able to do this. On top of that, I don't think this is announced by screen readers. And if I, okay, with zoom, I think it's okay. So this has a lot of issues. So and I have covered over and I also must be able to, I must also be able to dismiss this tooltip with the escape key. I'm pressing escape key right now, but I have not dismissed it. This is also in violation of the success criterion content on hover or focus. In addition, I, I have to be able to dismiss the, the, Two tip with my mouse, so there must be like a close button. And once I dismiss it, the two tip shouldn't appear again. This is again in violation of success criteria. There is no close button that I cannot close it with the mouse, and it always shows up. And I want to show you how it how it looks like with the screen magnifier. I'm going to turn on my screen magnifier now. Okay, so I have my screen magnifier right now, and when I as you see, as you can see, whatever I move over the text, it gets magnified. Let's say that I want to read the two tip text. So I'm trying to move my, my mouse over it so I can read it better, but it disappears. That's why it is very important to have two tips not disappear when you try to mouse over them. So, uh, is, so this is, let me turn off my magnifier. Okay. So uh, I'm going to stop the video now is the bootstrap accessible so I only tested like 50% of its components and I did not do it as a screen reader test I'm going to say some of your components are accessible like uh, the accordion I like it very much it's very accessible alerts I haven't tested with the screen reader I can't really say badges they seem great so I recommend using the badges they seem okay the breadcrumbs I don't have anything bad to say about the breadcrumbs other than maybe they're using area labeled by redundant a little bit Buttons are okay. The on buttons, not so much. Um, they're using links for buttons, which is something you shouldn't do. That's that was really bad. But they show up in high contrast mode, and they're like you know acting like buttons. So they also the link buttons that they have disabled. No, you should never do that. So be careful with the buttons. Button group. Uh, I think they're okay. Group. Okay, and then you have cards. Cards are great. I have nothing bad to say about the cards. Carousels. No, they're not. Carousel is not accessible. I'm not going to recommend that you use them. Close button, not accessible. They're not, doesn't show up in high contrast mode. A collapse. The collapse, they're not using the correct markup for collapse. So the drop downs, they're using not using the correct markup. They're using button. They're using links for button. List groups. I don't think that there's anything uh, bad in list groups. They're using area current, which the screen is just going to ignore it. So I think that's good. Models, no, models are not accessible at all. Even though the screen readers announces them, they have really big issues with the close button that disappears on high contrast mode. Not being able to scroll the the model with a lot of text. Some of the models have escape disabled. So that's that's really bad and they should really fix that. 
So yeah, that's that's all the, the and two tips I I recommend against using it because it's very difficult for two tips to be made accessible and these aren't. So just stay away from them. And yeah, that's that's what it is. I I don't really like Bootstrap. <laughs> I don't like CSS frameworks. Uh, but I would try to keep an open mind. And for some components, they did a great job. Like the accordion, I'm going to use it if I could, if I want to, if I was using <laughs> Bootstrap. But maybe I will for like prototypes. I mean, I use Bootstrap when I prototype some websites. I just never use it in production because it's like, uh, I don't like it as a framework. But some of these are really good. I haven't tested the rest. So, I mean, Bootstrap is trying to be accessible and I respect that. They just have to put more, they just have to fire access, excuse me, they have to hire accessibility specialists in order to make it more accessible. For right now, I think what they do is just read the wig and they don't have experts in that they can actually test the components in different. See, I test with the screen magnifier, with the screen reader, high contrast mode. I don't think they, they test in high contrast mode at all. So be careful with Bootstrap. Some of their components are good. Some of them aren't. I'm going to keep testing it in the next video. Okay, bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video, of course. <laughs> Bye-bye.